Welcome to St. Paul TV, a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church. The vision of our ministry is to build upon the whole person by providing theologically sound biblical teaching, effective worship, commitment to family, and an emphasis on understanding personal purpose. Our church school begins at 9.30 on Sunday morning. Worship service begins at 10.45. We have Bible study every Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Thanks for stopping by and enjoy a word from God. Chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. You know, they're trying to solve this murder, and they get ready to get questioned by it. And they come, they just all. 
they, they just hard. They're, you know, I ain't, you know, they, they hard. I, and you don't know nothing. It's just hard. Let's get, get on through this. But then, boy, when that thing start coming out, that boy, they know what can happen. Folk can talk. They got you a camera, whatever, whatever. Boy, you start seeing some jokes that start out real hard. Once they realize that, 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 boy, I got to find a way out of this thing. And then you see them breaking down, crying, giving up all the names. Uh, but because when you have to deal with reality, Reality will break you down. You know, you 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 try to like Superman or Superwoman, but reality will break you down. And right now, everybody that live that mock Christianity, that 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 that, that, that live the life of sin, didn't care. You know, um, they, 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 they have had no no desire to be right to be right with God. They they mock relationship with God. You know, but Mark being truthful and right with God. That um, Sister, Sister Palmer, back when you was coming up, did they have, let me see if they got that same term when you was coming up. See if you can finish it. Every dog. Has his Every dog has his tail. Has his tail. Every dog that carries bone will burn. That's it. you were above everything else. And so Babylon has lived and it talked about the people that just kind of got rich off of it. Got drunk off of it. The people that just lived a good life off of it. That, that's why it's important to, to don't let you, even as Christians, you got to be careful. You got to be careful of, 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 of you got to be careful of material things. Because they're good when used in the right way, almost like sex. Sex is good for when you when you're married. When you're not married and you do it out of out of, out of, out of the correct context, it's not good. It, it'll literally kill you. It send you to hell. You don't believe it? Do it, and when judgment comes, let's talk about it and, and, and see if it'll send you to hell. But if you don't want to wait that long, just look at the scriptures. And we've already looked at scriptures that it'll send you to hell. It's called fornication. All right, and so when it's in its proper context, and so money is extremely dangerous because money, even or not just money, material things, the love of money, it, it, it even creeps into those that try to be right, that try to be holy. It can creep in, and it can it could mess your thinking up, and you can take it out of con you can take it out of context. And begin and begin to to look just like and act just like and sound just like the world. And so that's why Paul was always like, you know, I've learned to be content. You know, whether I, I'm a base or a bound, whether I have a whole lot or have nothing at all. Uh, I, I've learned that he's based all he's basically saying that I've learned is that wherever I am at, wherever I am, you know, the family God wants me right here. So if I got a whole lot, this is what God wants me for this season. If I don't have much, this is what God wants me for this season. But we have to be real careful because sometimes we can chase that thing so hard that it'll take us out of the will of God. I, I, I've seen, I mean, I, I see it in the church all the time. You know, I, I, I see, I see where we're chasing, chasing, and it don't have to be me the me the dollars. It can just, just be just, just surviving. But I, I've seen people chase it so hard to where they lose focus on, on, on their spiritual development. And they so they so deep after that, they so deep after the money or whatever level it's at, that they lose focus on, on developing the spiritual. And um, and then you and then and so you can, but but, but the, the, the one the, the, the one good measure on on what you value is first where you spend your money. You can just look at your checkbook and you see where you spend your money. But another good measure is where you spend your time. You know, where, where am I spending my time? You know, do 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 I spend do I spend more time, you know, <laughs> chasing 
chasing that dollar than I do chasing a relationship with Christ. You know, and you got to pay your bills, but you got you still got to make sure that you don't sacrifice God, that He's not the sacrificial lamb. You know, that your relationship is not the sacrificial lamb uh, because you, you're trying to chase that dollar to make it happen. And, um, but Babylon is very deceitful. Babylon will dangle all these things in front of you. And Babylon will put all that stuff in front of you, seduction. And next thing you know, you you chase it. You know, that, you know even, even when it comes to networking. You know, there's some things that I'm invited to that, that yeah, it would be a great thing to go to. You know, you, you, you need to get a chance to, to meet very important people or socialize and, and, and shoot some things that you want to happen with very important people. Uh, but for me, and I'm not saying favor about it, I'm just saying you just, it's an individual thing. For me, I don't put myself, I, I have to watch the places I put myself in. And so, yes, I can go and socialize with these very important people, but for me, I don't necessarily, the things that I want, don't want my name attached to. And, um, and, and, and one thing that I don't attach my name to is, is alcohol. And so, yeah, this is a very nice event. A lot of very important people are going to be there. But I was, I choose to pass it up um, because I don't even want to confuse that whatever I had in my hand was the same thing that everybody else had in their hand, you know. And so I have to make calls like that, and so I have to pass it. But then what I have to do is say, well, you know what? I might pass up this opportunity to go and hang with these, these high-level high, high, high folks, I might pass that opportunity, but they're not responsible for my elevation anyway. In the end, it's, it's God that's going to be responsible for my elevation anyway. And, that's, and, and sometimes you got to make calls, sometimes you, you got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta judge, you know, I, am, I, am I putting this dollar before God? Am I chasing this stuff before God? And if you ever begin to chase that stuff ahead of God or before God, then you put yourself in a real vulnerable position uh, to, 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 to damage your relationship. And this right here says, you know, Babylon had done that all this time. Babylon did, did her thing. Babylon did not respect God or relationship with Christ at all. But then Babylon had to also face his maker. And it said, the angel came and said, Babylon has fallen. Seduced all the people, she's done all this kind of stuff. And so all the things that we see out there that seduce us, just just really take into account that all that stuff gonna have to answer in God's way. All that stuff gonna have to so whatever you choose to walk away from God towards, be sure that that thing is gonna be able to help you when it comes time to meet God. And just, and, and just like we gonna have to face God, every evil, every force out there, even Babylon, or that old concept, or it was referred to as that great prostitute, you know, that they gonna have to meet God. Satan gonna have to, he's gonna have to answer to God. Yes, ma'am. Um, it's a slow seduction. You start with one thing at a time, but also it's a society seduction because society teaches us that. The more quote unquote material you have, the better off you are, and the higher you know, your status and this and that. But all the material things in the world ain't gonna satisfy your spirit. And as a matter of fact, the more you gain, the more empty you can become. And it's very easy because if your spirit ain't satisfied, you, you just go always, you go always be seeking. It ain't nothing, you know, you gotta have the plane, you gotta have the yacht, you gotta have the this, you gotta have that. But that's because you, know, you ain't satisfied in your spirit. And when you when you choose to see God, God will satisfy you. He, you will be satisfied the best out of God. You know, you, you learn that you ain't got to have a steak every life. You can eat beans and rice and biscuits and it tastes good. You know, because you, you're satisfying your spirit. But society plays a large role in this. And until we can get away from what society defines as successful and and acceptable, you're in trouble. And the book of Proverbs, I think somewhere around chapter 17, somewhere around there, it basically says, be careful when you see yourself having an appetite for what's at somebody else's house. 
said, well, you see that, it says slit your own throat. Basically, the idea is you have to be content with where God has you. You, you dream, you, you press, you, you push for progress, but be content to where to wherever it is that God has you. And so, and I don't want to make it seem like it's a bad thing to have because you want to be able to have. You know, as a church, we, we don't want to be a broke church. We want to be able to have resources to, whether if it's a, have a daycare, or have an elementary school, or, or, or have, a, have, have housing for, for, for elderly, elderly members, or, or offer mentoring program, whatever it is, we want to have resources to do ministry individually. You want to have resources to do, but at the same, you, but you always want to make sure that I don't put the desire for the resources above from being in the right place where God is concerned. And that scripture right there basically says, kind of like if I, if I go to Jackie Bryan house, I need to be able to go to Jackie Bryan house or, or just to, I just say if she give me a ride somewhere. I need to be able to sit in her car and say, wow, this is a nice car. Nice. And get back in my minivan and still be happy. So when I, when I, when I'm going to mess myself up when I go and sit in a nice car. Right now, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm over at the dealership looking around. When, in other words, don't be a gentleman. There you go. There you go. Don't 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 try to be like George Ramsey Jones. <laughs> no. <laughs> but 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 that that's not it. You gotta be careful with that. It can tear marriages up. You know, it it, it, it can tear marriages up. You you your, your husband was fine. Fine. Now you done seen somebody else husband, and now he can. He he, um, uh, he he can go and change the oil in the car. You know he he can he know how to crank the lawnmower. You know he know he, he know how to, he know how. To, then you go back and look at yours. What do you know how to do? You know? He he was fine the whole time, but now you're gonna see somebody else of You know or he this this, this one he seems so spiritual or whatnot. Okay, and then you come back here. Why you can't be like so and so or or the same way vice versa? You know with the, with the wife. Just learn, just learn to listen to God. Be able to appreciate what other folk have, but 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 don't have an appetite for what's at somebody else's table. Listen to God and, and know what God wants to put on your table. You and found it? And it no, I read and it comes. That's yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. I think I saw almond milk then join, but that's your hand to join, or so just almond milk. I was just gonna follow up on what Linda was saying about society. It has been my life experience that if you are in step with society, you are probably not in step with God. Yeah. Our, our society, our culture is not based, never has been based on godly things. So she's right. If, you, if you're looking at society and trying to, to blend in, follow, using that as your guideline for or what you want, or how you want to live, or what your aspirations are. Like I said, you're probably not in step with the Lord, because that's not where He is. Just to touch on what you said, you see, you see it today as far as what you do you. You ain't touch with society, like the Bible, and what's going on. And it's corrupt to you. And it's, it's so bad that now we're fighting the chaos going on, because they're, they're so in touch with society. And, and, Follow the side and want to know what, what, what society is doing. You know, this is what imagine if you take some like energy and focus, you know, focus on God. You know, the, the thing that's going on that night is, is different. You always know, this back like, and you always say, you know, what's going on, man, what life is. So they, they're so in touch with society now, and then, you know, being in this new technology, all this stuff got going it don't make any, you know, no better. So they're, they're, they're just falling, you're falling apart. And, and, and. Let me see the hands of everybody that within the last week in your house you you cussing at somebody. <laughs> I, I, I thank God for the couple people that did show, but I think there's more people probably that, 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 that right now the show. I thank thank thanks for the hand. Um, but even things like that, we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different, and so we got to be so spiritual about this thing. We say, you know what, even though I'm in my house and no none of the, no other folk can't see me, but God still sees 
what's going on in Babylon. We have to see, am I allowing Babylon to reside in my in, in my life outside of those that saint outside of the sanctuary walls? All right. And so that's how that's how spiritual we have to, that's how spiritual we have to be about it. Because see, I can even go in, like I said, I can look and say, well, yeah, you yeah, know, and it's true. Everything he said is true. That yeah, these kids, they follow all these people. But the same way the kids are following people, how many of us in our own personal lives are still following worldly activities, still cussing at all that kind of stuff that, that we were supposed to do? The Bible said, any man being Christ is a what? And guess what? That don't exempt the women. When they say man, they mean mankind. Any person that said that they're in Christ, they're supposed to be new creatures. Say old things have what? Passed away. And behold, all things become what? New. Okay, and so that means that now I take on the character of Christ. And so I got to ask myself, what I'm doing in my life outside of the church, what I'm doing, would Christ do this? Would, it, would he act like this right here? And we have to begin, and that's how we begin to discipline, I said. That's how we, and, and, and I'm going to say something a little bit further. I think that those three people that raised their hand are probably in a better position to correct it than the eight people that did raise their hand that still think just because they can hide it from me that some kind of way God let me know. That's a sign of humility. That, that you know what, it ain't even about him. Right? Because God knows it. And so, and so, we can't allow Babylon to, to reign in our world because this scripture right here said that Babylon is going to fall. All right? Verse 4 through on. Hey, somebody read for me. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Okay, let me stop, and then I want you to start over again. So let's take it from after we go to actually what we live in now, referring to the whole world we live in now. All right, so I think it's actually taking us back to the, the, the period that we live in, the spirit that we live in, um, to where, where the Christians are still among also. So let me go back and correct that, and I'll read it again. Start over. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin." and that you receive not of her plagues. But her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. But she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall seek no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judges her. So he's telling the believers, in the midst of Babylon, he's saying the word. Does anybody know what it means to be consecrated? Does anybody know what that means to be consecrated? To be consecrated means that we're set apart. When we say that God has consecrated us, He set us apart. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed, there's, there's supposed to be something different about us. If you can't tell the difference between us and the world, if it walk like a dove, if it quiet like a dove, it don't matter that He got a name tag on that say dog. It's a dove. And so it don't matter that you, it don't, it don't matter that you, you know, you, you, you walk like a duck, quite like a duck, but you sit in a dog house, you still a duck. All right. And so if you walk like a sinner, you walk like the world, talk like the world, but you sit in church, that don't, it don't matter. What, what matters is the fruit that's coming forth from your life. That's what you are. And so he says, come out from among her, Babylon, come out, separate yourself. Yeah, you might miss out on some things. The many thing you might miss out on going to hell. 
You might miss out on some things, but, but fine. And that's what I was telling y'all in the start. I, in the start, there's a lot of things that I might not be able to take part in, but I have to ask myself, in the end, yes. In, 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 okay, I, I might not because of, the, because of the image that I want to portray, because how many know that a good name would take you farther than money? Because some people say, well, look, you got Rick Scott to the governorship. Money did. But believe me, it's going to catch up. It's going it, 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 it's to catch up. Money seems like it do things for you, but your name will make a your name your name will make a difference. And the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And so you got to be thinking that in everything I do, what is the name that I'm portraying to those that look at me? What's the name that I'm portraying? And so I might have to miss out. I might have to choose not to participate in something that seems like it might benefit me professionally. It might benefit me career-wise. It might benefit me as it relates to influence and power. But then I have to be real and understand that 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 every good and perfect gift comes from well. And so if it's something that's really needed for my life, it came from God anyway. God just uses people to bless us sometimes, but they still come from God. And so and, and so He said, "Come out from among them." I'm, on, I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta ask this question. I just want y'all to be real with me. We we have real conversation, right? And some of our best Bible studies have come from real conversation, right? I ain't getting a lot. I'm seeing a lot of some head shake, but y'all 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 don't know where I'm trying to take you. I see a lot of heads agreeing, but y'all I don't hear too much verbal because you say, well, you might come my direction. So, but just let me ask the question, and then I had to deal with it too. I, I, I mean, I'm turning there's nothing wrong with my turn, but there are a lot of things that that they may do that's not that's not a good reflection on me, even at the at the alumni level that I can't participate in. Oh Jesus! I'm gonna have to say this right here. We can turn to everything, but I'm gonna have to put this out here. Let me see what this is for. <laughs> I'm safe. I'm safe with you. Alright. I'm just going to use one group as an example, but it'll apply to all groups. I know it'll apply to mine, but I want to hit St. Augustine. If the Elks Lodge is having a, a party round at the house, it, it's just a club scene. You got drinking, you got everything else that goes on at the, at the club scene. You feel like somebody that's identified as a Christian that might be God throwing me a lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like somebody that's identified as a Christian, especially over it, I don't even want to say a respected Christian because all Christians should be able to respect them. But if somebody identified as a Christian should participate in that, or do you feel like it, it, it's, it's fine if they give you reasons for saying it's fine? Come on, let's talk to me. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm telling myself. Remember when Pastor Matt Riley had his um, New Year's Day? Watch that service. Yeah, we yeah. had it here. Yeah. And she told me, I know half the y'all from Leeds can't go to the, um, to the Leeds, right? Mm -hmm. so me and my father, we went to the Leeds, <laughs> right? We did. I went. Not, and you know what? Pastor Rob, I felt so out of place. I felt so out of place. It was just, it was like, this, this, this ain't you no more. You know, and so last year, after we left St. Luke, I went home and I was perfectly satisfied with going home. I felt good about going home. You know what I'm saying? So you can do that, but after a while, you go feel like I think this is the struggle that you have. You want people to respect you as a Christian. But then they see things that make them say, really the only difference between you and me is that you go to church and I don't. We're doing the same, we're doing the same thing. Yes, sir.
saying that your body is for you. No, it's not Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, sir. That's okay. That's public, right? So that's that's public. Open up or not? That's keep take the print. All right. That's public or not? So then you got these people who who sit in church, who sit in various areas, you know, in the church, the whole position in the church, and they still live the same lifestyle. They still fornicate. You see what I'm saying? And that's another thing. You know, when you put the club scene up, up there, right? So I'm putting the fornicate up there. We you don't know, talk about that before. I, I, I mean, you know, they ain't no different. Mm -hmm. You want people to respect you, but you lie. So you might as well go to the You know what I'm saying? You might as well. Well, I mean, actually, if you, God would probably like it more. Like what? Because if you were straight, I if mean, you just just uh, just say I'm straight, I'm not gonna play with you, God. I'm gonna go out here the world, be at the full floor. Because He's saying He'd rather you be cold or hot. He said this when you're lukewarm, that aggravates him. He, he hates the fact that when you say you're a Christian, but you don't act like a Christian. Because then what's happening, you're making him look bad. You're, because we're his ambassadors. He rather, at least if you're in the world, at least nobody ain't identifying you with him. You know, but, 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 but you say that you're part of him, but then you go out and do something that, that does not reflect him. And he said that's really what he, what, what, what he, what he really can't, he don't have high tolerance for. It's, it's people that, that do that. I saw a sister Color, then I saw a brother Thomas, then I see Sister Ray. But that's what the word says that more Saturday, 
and I, I think that's why God hates it so much when church people do it because people are looking, people feel like, well, he's in that position. I should be able to look at him. Because everybody can't just hear. People say, well, I heard God say, or God said. Everybody can't hear that. Some people at a they level where they're trying to learn, so while they're trying to learn what God wants them, they, they need physical human examples. Yeah. And so they're looking at people that they feel like should be there, and then the example that those people set, that those people learn is all it's, it's learned behavior. Alright? And so it, and so and so I, I think that's why God truly despises it, because we teach people how to walk the wrong way. Do I let them twirl that your hand also? No, you know, I was, I was Let me come. Let me come to you. I was saying you in line. You in line? Okay, I'm gonna come to you. I got about three in front of you, but I'm gonna come to you. I just I didn't want to see if, that, if you were standing because that was your hand. But I'm gonna come to you. I'm gonna let, let you reply. Then we get right, sister right, Joanne. Then I think twelve, and then twelve. And also, I want to point out the fraternity side. Myself and Tyler both belong to the same uh, frat. Oh, I know you said. Okay. Wait. A lot of my. <laughs> a lot of my, my fraternity brothers have fraternity faculty because, you know, I, I, when I was in the fraternity, I was known as a certain person. Mm -hmm. Now that I've backed away from that certain person, I'm mean, known as just my, my fraternity name. They're like, well, why you ain't coming to hang with me? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to partake. I don't drink. So why am I coming? Right. Right. And, and sometimes you got to make a choice. They say, come out from among them. And so sometimes you have to separate yourself from family. Um, Carolyn, Joanne, Twyla, Ty. Okay. I think what we see so often within the body is we want to place sin on different levels. Right. Whether it's you're gossiping on the phone, right. whether you're acting rude to people in church, whether you're going around to the elks, or whether you're drinking, it's all the same. Right. And people want to put it on different levels to think that what you're doing is worse than what I'm doing. There is no difference in the eyes of God. Sin is sin. And, and so often in the body, we want to distinguish different sins. Oh, well, you're doing this. But what about when you're getting on that phone calling someone to gossip about something? Or what, what about when you're giving somebody a nasty attitude right there in the sanctuary? There is no difference. And, but we want to put it on different levels. There is no different levels. It's all the same in the eyes of God. And I think that's a lot of, I think a lot of times why things happen within the body is because we want to place sin on different levels, and there are no different levels. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. I agree with that. I think that's what Linda was going to keep opening up. I agree, I agree with that. Join us. Um, um, this is another person. 12. Because I'm going to get my thoughts. Okay. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand. No, we got out of that ship. It's still away. Get it come back.
from coming and wanting to be better and coming and committing and, and, and deciding to stay as you are. And so I think people that come that, live, that, that don't have it all finished yet but want to be better, uh, I think they're putting themselves in the right reprobate. Somebody, somebody look up reprobate. Look up that word in your, your um, course for the reprobate. R E P. Reprobate. Reprobate. Try to find that scripture for me. My understanding of reprobate is somebody that began to, they have gotten so far off on left field that they begin to call wrong right and right wrong. But my, my thing is when, when somebody's in the church, I can't believe that most people that come and give their, their life to Christ come not wanting to be saved, not wanting to live right. I, I just feel like the bulk of the people that there, there may be counterfeits there, because you got counterfeits everywhere. But the bulk of the people I believe that come to Christ are sincere. Let's and go. and we just gotta help them and love them through it. Let's go to Romans 1 28. But 
But the church can't be timid about pressing and demanding righteousness because it might hurt somebody's feeling. And so I think that a Christian that is sincerely trying to do better, and, and let's, let's do it, let's just look at it. Because all a Christian is, we, we're engaged to God. That's all it is. It's a relationship where we're engaged to be married. That's all it is. And so they step out of the Christian because sometimes it's easy to look at a parable and see the truth. So let's say if somebody's engaged to me, somebody's engaged to be my wife, okay, there are certain things that I'm going to expect in this engagement process. Now, if that person continues to make excuses about why they can't fulfill what should be expected in this relationship, I have a choice. I have, I, 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 have, I have a choice to accept them not living up to the standards that I expect, or I have a choice to demand the standards. And so as it relates to our relationship with Christ, we have some people that are trying their best to reach the standards. And when they come and the word, the word rebukes them or reproves them, they say, ouch, and they go say, God, I want to do better. But you have some Christians that the word can't rebuke because in their mind, they are not concerned with trying to adjust to the word. They're just happy being in the church. There's some level of security or whatever because they're a part of the church. But they are not going, they, they are not receiving the word that, that highlights that something needs to be fixed. They're not going and trying to fix it. The Bible says that in the midst of in, in the midst of everything, you're gonna have some sheep and you're gonna have some wool. You're gonna have some wheat and you're gonna have some tails. And he said, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna separate it. And so, and so, and, and so the and so the idea is, the idea is. Those kind that are there that are not convicted by the word, that when it's highlighted in the word that they need to make, make adjustments and then never move, it doesn't bother them. Yeah. And, and they're committed to the wrong that they're doing and not willing to try to change and get better. I, 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 think, that, I think that God would have, those are the ones that are lukewarm. Those are the ones that just in the church because of whatever reasons, but they're not trying to continue to line themselves up. Everybody in the church got work to do. There's not one person that's in the church that does not have things they need to get better and prove upon in their life. But there are some folk that's in the church that when those things are revealed, they don't have it anywhere in their mind to now go and try to adjust their lives and line up with the word of God. And those kind of people right there, those are wolves. Those are wolves. They dressed up like sheep. But they're wolves and sheep clothing. They will go and try to infect the whole body. They'll keep listening to the preaching. They'll keep listening to the teaching. They will never make, they will never decide, hey, let me go and look in the mirror. Let me see what it is that I need to correct about. And those kind right there, the church has to be willing that when we can identify those, that when we if we have to put them out, and I know it sounds wrong, but scripture says. Scripture tells us that when they're in the midst of us, because he said the scripture, after the scripture talked about it, said that when we put them out, we might actually save their soul. Because if we allow them to keep doing wrong and keep being apart, and so let's let's imagine somebody that, that, that and, 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 and and we're very we're not we're not as strict as as, as, as Paul as Paul as, as Paul. We we're not as strict as they were. Alright? But 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 we still have to have a level of standard. And, 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 and it says that it says that if we do not deal with the things that they refuse to correct and they're doing it openly in, um, in amongst the body, it says we don't deal with it. We literally we 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 we're literally helping them go to hell, almost like a child. When you see a child doing wrong, if you don't correct that child, you start you can't steal. You don't correct that child about stealing, and you, you, don't, you don't deal with that child, you don't punish that child about stealing, and that child goes out and steals, 
outside the house, that child is going to be punished. And so he said that when we deal with them, he said we literally will save their soul because now they're getting, they're, 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 they're getting more confirmation that this behavior is not accepted. Many people continue to do what they do in the church because nobody will say it's wrong. Nobody will say, no, it will not be allowed. And, 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 and so that's what the church has to be willing to step up. And the Bible says a little leaven, leaven the whole lump. And so you got this dough, you got this dough. You put a little piece of leaven on it, a little bit of leaven, and everything's going to rise. And if you allow foolishness to go on in the church and not address it, you find your whole body starting to get affected or infected if you don't address it. And so, and so I, know it, I know it sounds harsh. I know, I, I know it sounds harsh, but that's the mentality that you have to, that's the mentality that you have to preach and teach with. Stop playing with God. Get serious with God. When God tells you you need to change something, go and change it. Don't leave and say, yeah, I heard what he said, but. And so many Christians say, yeah, I hear what he's saying, but I can't stop what he said. Yeah, I hear what he's saying, but I ain't going to stop all that gossiping. I hear what he's saying, but. I can't stop all that cussing. I can't stop this. I can't stop it. That one right there, that right there needs to be rooted out of the church. Let them get out there and let the world beat them across the head. And then when they come back, next time they'll come back for real. But they can't be allowed to function in the church with it and they're not trying to better themselves. And so that that's the that's the mind, that's the mindset of because the, on the on the other side you say, well, at least if they keep coming to church, at least if they keep coming to church, at least they keep getting around the word and one day hit. Well, yeah, they hit the one that's trying to do better. But the one that got their mind made that they're going to do what they want to do, they, they get turned over to a wreck of mind. He said, I'm not even going to convict you anymore. I'm not even going to bother. The Holy Spirit's not going to waste his time with you anymore. And so that's where we have to make that little, that little separation right there. That there are some that really we could do better if they wasn't coming to the church because they're doing more harm than good. They get to go out there, get their behind, beat by the devil. And then this time when they come back, they realize that I, I need, I, I really need to make a commitment to God, but they can't be accepted in there and, and just and, and just doing wrong and don't have no conviction to try to do try to do better. So you came back, okay? Yeah. I can. So you had to formulate. Yeah. yeah. But it's interesting what you said because it kind of like piggyback on what Carolyn was saying. But rather not sure, like you know. If there's a degree, I know there's not a degree of sin, it's sin is sin. But so what's the difference between a person going to the elves or playing cards or uh, a mean and nasty person, you know, who just like to be mean and nasty. So then, you know, well, how do you weigh the difference? What's the difference? Is that sin? No, I'm saying it's the, the, the sin is the elves is not the sin. Like I said, the organization is probably a great organization. But if they if they drinking and getting drunk and cursing and all that kind of stuff is going on there, why are you as a Christian a part of it? So even if I was playing card and we gambling and drinking and cursing, why am I why am I putting myself in the midst of? I'm supposed to come out, okay? And so the same thing that you might do with a group that's doing all those things, you can come and still have fun, but not put yourself in the position of doing the sinful things. And so to gather together and to fellowship is not a sinful thing. That's not a sinful thing at all. It's what you, it's the, it's, it's the things that you're doing. And so even the drinking is not a sinful thing. It is for me, but it's not an overall sinful thing. But you get drunk and you're cursing and, and all the rest of the things that's going on. Do you think that God is pleased with that setting? And so you have to ask yourself, is God pleased with this setting right here? And if you think he is, enjoy yourself. But if you don't think that God is, just imagine, imagine the setting that you're in, bust out in, in amazing grace and see if you look, see if people look at you crazy. And so, and so the setting, the setting that you're in, it, 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 is this right here a setting that to where to where that and, and, and it's not so much that I need to go shut it down, but maybe I need to pull myself out of it. Maybe that's like 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 Mel would say, maybe that's not for me anymore. And I always probably had those moments. I, I, my last moment, my last time at the club, I just sat there and just asked myself, why? Why, why, why are you here, man? And, but the, the, the thing that it goes back to is what we initially said. 
We gotta understand this thing is, let Nino Brown say this thing is bigger than me. This thing is bigger than us. People are looking at us and making determinations about God off of what they what they perceive about us. And so we have to we have to be thinking like we have to be thinking like ambassadors the whole time. Am I setting a good example for God? And ask, and ask that question. And, 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 and if I'm not, why am I getting in it? So and so I don't even have to look and see what is it. Am I setting a good example for God? Am I a good ambassador right now? And I don't even have to deal with it. So even if it's on the phone and somebody's calling me and they're talking about you know gossiping about somebody, by me sitting on this phone and listening, am I setting a good example for God? And if I'm not, um. So what you saying? You, do you want to pray about it? No, I, we we ain't accomplishing nothing by sitting there talking about this person. We we, we can pray about them and try to hit, try to, you know lift them up and pray them. But but all this, so what we talking about? This is not helping at all. And uh, that that's the way that's the way things need to be confronted. Don't hide it. Don't 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 don't, don't the, 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 oh, the, so we, do we need to pray about it. This gospel is not like gospel to me. You, you want to pray about it? And, and, and really be honest with you. And then folk, you'll find out folks will start, folk start bringing that Miss T because the, the dog that brings them, the one saying, want to gossip to you, will gossip about you. Amen. And so you sit there, you, you sit there and give because you want to, but it'll, it'll, and so we have to, we don't want, we don't want people to feel comfortable bringing foolishness. And so like, like you say, you know, it's nothing wrong with fret. Ain't nothing wrong with fret. But if people are now not wanting to be around me, you know, that, that, that let me know that if it was nonsense that they were involved in, that's a good thing. They don't feel comfortable bringing that nonsense around me now. You are really worried when folk feel comfortable bringing nonsense to you. When folk feel comfortable including you in the nonsense. When, when somebody invites you somewhere or something, and then it's, it's nonsense. You need to start wondering why in the world would they invite me? I, 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 I'm happy when I find out I ain't invited myself. That was nonsense. That means they got enough respect to, to know no one's going to not even invite me to that nonsense. I saw something. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I think you hit some very valid points there. And I think, number one, you got to, you, every individual needs to have a personal relationship with God. Develop that through reading the word, coming to church, coming to Bible study, praying and learning about the word, and being open to receive from the word. Number two, ain't nobody exempt. Ain't nobody exempt. Like Carol said about the sin fighting, this one first, no, 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 no. Sin is sin is sin. Ain't nobody exempt, number one. And number two, ain't nobody grandfather in. From the youngest to the oldest, I don't care if you've been here a hundred years. You ain't, you, you ain't grandfathered in, ain't no such thing. It's like you always talking about one say, and I always say, that's a lot. Straight up, that's a lot. So, it keep, I, I, and, and I'm, I'm always talking to you first. Don't feel like I'm pointing fingers at nobody, because I know you real good. But um, the thing is, we, we got, you got to be accountable for yourself. All right? So, so next time, think about that. And something else you said, but the stuff that we do, like you're talking about the drinking and the smoking and all of this, would you sit down across the table from Jesus and read? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if you wouldn't, and if, and if you wouldn't, then maybe it's something to think about. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't something not 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 about what would Jesus do, because we know what he would, you know he would do. But it's a question of would you do it in front of? Him? Right. And if the answer is no, you might want to think about it. And so and so when we find ourselves saying it low. We, you, we know it. We find, you already know it. Read you saying it low. Because you shouldn't be saying it anyway. Yeah. But somehow we're saying it low. Babylon done tricked you. And so he's saying, come out. Stop acting like Babylon. the church would be so powerful if the church was serious about reflecting God. Not if the church was perfect, but if the church was serious about reflecting God. Tied them going back to Felicity. But I think this is uh, the twilight. Okay. Now, you know, nothing about she was probably going to say, but I was saying that when you 
say that when people are coming, you know, when you're doing things, you should keep coming to church and keep doing that. I mean, it, one thing you should, I think you should, it, it's got to be a one. But it's some fact that, um, you know, myself, you know, I couldn't just not come to church and, and, and accomplish some of the things that that, 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 I, that I, I have accomplished now. And so I thank God so much for that. And then it's like, you know, now, you know, I, I, I pray and then I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm around good folks and then like, like friends, I get like Miss Palmer, she used to always on me, tied DJ and Sunday school. <laughs> Don't miss Sunday school. <laughs> See, I, you know, with, 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 with um, Miss Brian, I think I had uh, pronounced a word wrong. And it wasn't, it, you know, and then she got on me. And it's not nothing bad. I accept it because I was wrong and she corrected me because she wanted me to do better. But I say that to say that, you know, you got to keep coming. You know, if you're striving, you want to do better, and you want to do better, you got to keep coming. You got to come to Bible study. You got to come to Sunday school. You got to come to the church. Because I, you know, I have to think, because now, you know, I don't club no more. I don't drink no more. And the hardest thing for me, like I always talk to you about, the hardest thing for me, especially me being single, was the fornication part. That was so hard for me. And, and it's like, and I was wrestling with that thing, but I, I kept working at it. And I kept working, I thank God, because I'm seven months clean. You know, he'll work that thing out for you, but I, I think we have to keep coming. We have to keep coming. I want to kiss something Ty said. I want to kiss something Ty said. He said he was seven months clean. He looked at it like people look at a drug addiction. It was still a sinful addiction. People don't people don't look at sex in, like as a sin. But he looked at it the same way somebody would look at a drug addiction. addiction. I'm seven months pleasing God. I'm seven months clean from that sin that God gave me power to do. And so I think every sin, you got to look at it that way. Is it just as bad as crack cocaine? And, and, and that's how he's able to do it because he didn't have a, tes a testimony. Not like, I done made it seven months. But no, I'm seven months clean. I mean, the opposite of clean is what? Dirty. dirty. Amen. I'm seven months not dirty. That's right. All right? Is that, was it twice? No, Lisa, okay.
And so if I'm just sitting there just chilling, you know, and, and, and they say everybody's smoking and drinking, and I'm just sitting there just chilling them, and I'm kind of doing it in, more than likely somebody going to say, you know, I saw Felicia at, um, I used to call it old Gainesville Club. I used to go through, I saw Felicia at Village Traffic, you know. Uh, and that's what they're going to say. And then that's going to start messing up the name right there. So that's where you got to make sure that you're real careful and, and, and make sure that that, that you are you that you that 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 that, that you hundred percent that God is pleased with where you are because once your name starts going down, uh, it's hard to be a strong to be really utilized by Christ because people don't respect you. They say, well, that, that person is just like me. And sometimes sometimes it can be that they not they really not just like you, but because they were careless with their name, with their perception, with the image that they portrayed, because they were careless with. Now you assume that they were able to, they not that way, but rather the left, rather how, how you look at it, they still have a perception that they're probably not going to see what I'm saying. Go ahead. What if you're in a situation and it seems like you're a bad person, but you don't want to be in a situation, how can you get out of it? The way you get out of it, everybody, alphabet. I told Alphmet and I, Chip, Alphmet sent me a, a text message this week. And she was basically like, I just, I want to get right. I'm, I'm going I'm to go find it. I'm going to I'm I'm tell you, this is how we handle it. This is, this, is, this is a good question, Felicia. And this is where I think a lot of people that's trying to do better need to, to um. all right. Good morning. I just passed you on 207. I just wanted to tell you I'm ready for God to use me some kind of way. It was on my heart to tell you that, okay? Yes, ma'am. And I want to start coming to Bible study as well. And my response was, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So what you gonna do? Those are my exact words. Ain't nothing to it, but you, I want to start to come to Bible study. My response was, ain't nothing to it, but to do it. So what you gonna do? And her response was, I'm gonna just do it. Felicia, <laughs> Felicia, when we know what God is telling us, because he shows us what's not, what he, he shows us the things that are in our life that that are literally separating us from being right where he wants us. And he shows us, he bothers us with it. When he shows it to us, if we just do it, don't wrestle with it, don't play with it, just say, God, God told people, he said, man, God, I want to be able to do what you're doing tonight. I bet you I could do it. Jesus said, come. Right then, he had a choice to make. Either just go out there, or sit and say, well, shoot, if I step on this water, all in, I ain't got no black jacket on. Uh, the way Christians mess up, and I'm saying Christians, people that really want to do good, they think too much. They think about all this other stuff. They think too much. When God puts up on our heart to deal with, to do, the best way to do it is just come on out there and do. And what we're going to find out, because we were, the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. I might be sacrificing and doing all this stuff. God, I pay my tithes. God, I do this. God, I do But you're not being obedient, Ron. You keep wrestling with what I'm telling you to do and you keep trying to figure out how to do it and how you're going to exist after you do it. You, who you, who you, young people wrestle, or not young people, people wrestle with, if I drop all these friends, what am I going to be alone? Just do it. Why you keep wrestling and these people keep dragging you down and you keep, there's so many things that God keeps putting on our heart and we keep just wrestling in our mind. How about that? Ain't nothing to it. 
anything in life to every Christian in here. When God puts them on your heart and says, this is the direction I need you to do, ain't good, nothing to it but to do it. Now it's on you what you're going to do. I ain't, you ever been to Bible study before after that? Okay, but when the question was put out there, what you going to do now? You saw what you want to do. What you going to do? I'm, I'm going to do it. And she healed. That's where we have to be committed to God. Just go ahead and make it up in our mind. I'm going to do it. And God, because I did what you told me to do, I'm just stepping out here on the wall. And that's every Christian life. Stop wrestling with stuff and just do what God told you to do. I'm going to give you a good example. And then I'm going to try to get ready to close out. A good example was the reason I got saved because my ex-wife finally got small and left me. If she would have left me, I probably would have never gotten saved. But because she left me and took my children, that, that got me. Man, because I thought, I mean, I was a man. Because nobody could tell me I wasn't a man. And, and, and any woman that was able to for Ron to call her his woman, she she black. When that woman left me, there's no way where I thought a woman would leave me. When that woman left me, I was like, oh my God. She left me. She left me. <laughs> I mean that but that was what I needed, because I didn't think nobody would leave me. That was what I did. And when, when she left and I knew that my kids were going, I was like, Jesus, everything that I thought, everything that I thought just collapsed. I was going to an adult entertainment service at the time where I sent girls out to go and dance with me. When she did that, that thing shipped me so bad, I called all the girls up. Work it over. I had to try to figure this thing out now, but I wasn't everything I thought I was. I called all and these, these people needed to feed their families. And they were like, no, no, please, please. I don't know, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but my my life just got I, my world just got shook. All of them, I don't care how you gonna feed, go back to somebody else, I don't care, but I can't I can't run it no more. I gotta figure this thing out. My granddad's papa was, he was a he was an Emmy preacher for El. I think he was about 97 years old at the time. I went over to, to his house over my grandma, uh, he, he lived with my grandma. I, I went over there and just sat there on the porch. I was just listening to him all day. He was just talking about life. Just sat there and listening. But everything that he I'm talking about 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock, a whole work day, I just sat there and listened to him. I didn't have to get ready for the girls. I mean, I wasn't no preventable clothes now. I sat there, and he just talked about life. And he's talking about life. Everything that, the reoccurring theme, and I went this for like three days ago. The reoccurring theme was Jesus. Everything he kept was breaking his kids, taking care of his family, Whatever, it was always Jesus. Just he just sitting talking to me all day long. And after three days of sitting there just going and listening to the Father, I said, Boy, I'm going to answer now. And my mom had been calling me from the time I was 17 years old when I left home to go to college till I was 27 at this time right here. Would always call. Went from every week to maybe once a month to a couple times a month. And, but she would always keep calling and say, Ron, you want to go to church today? Because she was a pastor. And I always said, no, Mom. Mm -hmm. But after sitting and talking to Papa, I realized what had went wrong in my life. And that Sunday morning, I went to Mama Church. She, didn't have, she, 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 she called. But just so happened, I was like, yeah, I'll go. So she was like, you go. And I said, yeah, I go. And I got to church already. Knew when I walked in, it had been 10 years since I had been in the church. It was 
My daddy was a pastor. Then my mom was a pastor. I just grew up in the church. When I walked in the church, I just knew this it right here. I accepted Christ that same day. And that same moment, that same moment, I made the decision that everything I used to be, I'm ready to drop it off. That same moment, I went, I, I ain't like dealing with the little, little small stuff, so I used to buy my weed and book, not to sell it, but just so I ain't have to keep going back. All my weed, I went and flushed it down the toilet. All my frat brother told doctors are done. I'm through with every, every everything done. This I'm, 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 I'm all through with it. The last thing I had to do, not the last thing, but one of the hardest things I had to do, I went to my ex-wife. She was, this was May, this was, this was May. At the end of school year, she was ready to go take the kids and move to town. By this time, I had already accepted Christ, and so she was kind of, she was still going to leave, but she was still kind of, kind of cool. All the stuff she thought I did, she wasn't really sure of. It. I was a good liar. But she didn't have no proof. She didn't have no evidence. And so it just had to be, had to be in mind that I was a good liar. The final thing I had to do. God said, Ron, before your wife leave, you got to let her know all the dirt you did. Now, we get ready to go through a divorce, you're going to have custody and all this other kind of stuff. And so I was like, oh my God. I mean, because, I mean, I never even, from the, the day I was married, I never even considered, like, not cheating. That was never even consideration. I cheated every week. And so that wasn't even considered. I mean, that wasn't even a thought. And so, and so I, and so when God said that, I called my dad, who was a pastor. He was a pastor at the time. He had to stop. I called him. I said, "Daddy, I say God told me to tell Andrea that all of my cheating." My dad told me, "Say, Ron, I understand you saved now. I understand you doing the right thing now, but." She ain't gonna see it like you see it. And I said, well, God said I gotta do it. That was a hard thing God told me to do because I knew I was rich losing my children with very little visitation. And I called and I said, well, she was out of the house. She, was, she hadn't left out here. She waited for the kids to miss her home. So I'm ready. Just one last thing I gotta tell you. I said, um, Really been no time since we've been married. We didn't want to date. I ain't never considered. I mean, that just wasn't a thought. Like, being faithful, that wasn't even a thought. I said, from the time we've been known each other, all through our marriage, we were married in 1986 to 94. That's eight years. I said, from the time, and we have been dating since 84. I said, from the time we've been dating and married, I said, I've never, I've never been faithful. And then so she began to ask questions. What about when we was getting ready to go to Barbados? And I, because I came home one night and got home like, I'm going to be leaving Barbados with my family at 5 o'clock in the morning to go catch the flight. I'm out at the club. At 3 o'clock in the morning, I went and got in some dirt. And I was so drunk, I got to put my clothes back on. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to know why was you out there with your. Why when you rolled up like that, why would you. Why did you, you know, why did you ride off when I pulled up to the. That. Oh, what about when you went to. When I got the receipt, when you went to Black Beach Week? And I got a receipt from the, I mean, the, the hotel sent a, a letter talking about thanks for your visit, and I asked you about that. I was cheap. I told as much as I, I couldn't remember everything, but I told as much as I was like, I vote. I used to have 
girls out there every weekend when you thought I was hanging my frat brother. I had girls out there on the boat ride down the river. I had to tell her here, I had to tell her what the dancers, what I let them do. I had to tell her everything. That woman said, I'm so glad you told me. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> but you will never see your kids again if I have anything else to do with it. She left a week early. I said, God. I listen to you, and I, the two things that I love more than anything in this world. Now this woman said, if she, if she have anything to do with she'll never let me see my kids again. I don't quit my money making job, I don't quit the thing that makes money, I have no resources. She left, went to Tampa. I'm in Gainesville all by myself. The only thing I got now to make money is a little fake, all the detail business that I had at the front. Now I got to try to make money. I couldn't pay for that. I stopped. They came and took my boat. Came and took one of my cars. Came and took another car. Came and took the van. Came and took all my vehicles. Came and took my stuff. I'm sitting up in the house. The lights done got cut off. I trusted God. I stayed faithful to God. I didn't go back to any of that stuff. By the time a year passed, every time I got some money, I'd go to town. By the time, not even more, like, about a year passed, she saw my life. She saw I wasn't compromising a bit. She knew my frat brother. She was one I sweep off. She knew that I had totally separated myself. She saw the man that I had become. The same woman that looked at me when I trusted God and did what God told me to do. The same woman called me up and said, Ron, and by then she had not had Jamal. I'm not Jamal biological, biological dad. She didn't have somebody had Jamal. She said, well, it was two years later, two years later. Jamal was almost one year old. She said, Ron, Ron is in the fifth grade now. He made those sixth grade with school stars. And I respect the man that you become. I think that he needs to be, he needs to see you. He needs to see a man like this in his life. And then she was crying. She was like, as much as it hurts me, he needs to be with you. And I said, well, I mean, I don't, no need for him to be separated. And so she was like, he, 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 he early come to me. And I said, them all not my son. I said, but those are his brothers and sisters. And I'll be his daddy because the daddy hadn't the daddy had gotten involved. I said, I'll be his daddy if you let him come. She sent all three of the kids back to live with me. She was still living in town. So God showed me, it took two years. But God showed me, Ron, if you just trust me, be honest with that woman. Do what I told you to do. Don't make no excuses about what she might do. Do what I told you to do. It might take a little while. But in two years, I got all of my kids, plus one that's, that's mine, and they've been with me ever since. Then she in the moon. But that's the kind of stuff that God can do for us. If we stop trying to rationalize and see how it's going to work, and we just say, you know what? I'm just going to do what he tell me. He will work it out. So whatever it is that you're wrestling with, do what God is telling you to do. And it might not look, tomorrow it might not look right. I had to drive back and forth to Tampa for two years. I'm a hundred, I'm a hundred percent man. But every time I drop them kids off, anybody familiar with I said it, Tampa the game I said it right? Every time I drop them kids off, I literally would not stop crying. I'm telling you, I start crying. I, 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 I literally would not stop crying until I was past past four count. I would cry for almost hours, just just crying. That, that was my heart. But God, uh, you do it. But we have to we, we have to trust God and do what God said. And we it's not that we we not gonna have to cry sometimes. But then I got all my kids. 
all of my kids came back to live with me, and, 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 and they've lived with me ever since. <laughs> Whatever you wrestle with that God said, the scripture says, come out from among them and do what I'm telling you to do. God bless you. Well, we pray that you were blessed by our ministry at St. Paul TV. St. Paul TV is a production of the Media and Technology Ministry of St. Paul AME Church, 85 Martin Luther King Avenue, St. Augustine, Florida. And if you were blessed, I want you to go and make a difference in this world. Make God proud of you. If you have a church home, go and make a difference in your church. If you're in need of a church home, a place to where you can be nourished and fed, I ask that you strongly consider making St. Paul AME Church your church home promise you you won't be disappointed now if you believe in reaping and sowing we invite you to be financial partners with st paul ame church this is good ground and if you'd like to sow into this ministry please visit our website at stpaulfamily.com and click on the make a contribution list remember no matter where you have been where you are or where you're going there is a place for you at st paul ame church <music>